Hey gang, welcome back to MATLAB for Non-Believers. In this one we're going to learn how to plot a function of one variable. Now let's say it's 11.30 at night and your homework has to be submitted by midnight and all you've got to do is plot that one function and you're done, but you can't figure out how to do it. It gets frustrating, I know. Makes you want to just pull out your Nerf gun and start shooting at the computer. Well, before we do something rash, Let's go to my computer and I'll show you how to plot a function of one variable. So there's two different ways to do it. One is to use a list of numbers and the other one is to use something called an anonymous function. Okay, let's say some professor like me has asked you to find the roots of a polynomial, maybe a quadratic equation. For this example, let's use 5x squared plus 3x minus 5 and you need to plot it. Now there are two ways to plot an equation in MATLAB. The first is to make a list of numbers, kind of like you would in Excel, and just send those two lists to the plot command. Make a list for x and a list for y, and just say plot x, y. The other way to do it is to use something called an anonymous function, where you don't have to make a list of numbers, you just make a function. And then you use a function called easyplot that puts the plot on the screen for you. Let's start by making a list of numbers. Now making lists in MATLAB is easy because it's designed to work with lists. They're called vectors, but they're lists of numbers. There's a list that goes from minus 5 to 5 in steps of 1. Now what I can do here is I can now make a function that evaluates at each one of those x's. Now this isn't going to work. See? that error there. So there's, there's this text about scalar and square matrix. What the heck does that mean? Well it means that MATLAB thinks in terms of lists of numbers and right there that x squared I told it to multiply that list of x's by itself. Well what does that mean? In mathematics there are several ways to multiply li vectors, lists of numbers. There's a uh, dot product, there's a cross product, and I can also go through that list just element by element and just work through it that way. Well that's the one I want and uh, in MATLAB the way to do that is you put a dot anytime you're multiplying one list of numbers by another you put that little dot in there and that tells you to go uh, element by element with a dot product and a cross product you put vectors in and you get numbers out this you put vectors in and you get a vector out so there it is. There's my list of y's to go with the x, and I can plot x, y. There it is. Well, that looks kind of chunky. Maybe I want to use uh, more points. Instead of going from minus 5 in steps of 1, minus 5 to 5 in steps of 1, maybe I want to go from minus 5 to 5 in steps of point 0.1. Well, I'm just hitting the up arrow here, there. When you hit the up arrow, it pulls back all the commands, or recalls the commands you've just issued. So I'm going to go from minus 5 to 5 in steps of 0 0.1. That syntax right there says go from minus 5, the next number will be minus 4.9, minus 4.8, all the way up to 5. Now that's going to be a lot of numbers, and I don't want those coming to the screen. So if I don't want the, the, the result of the calculation to go to the screen, put a semicolon at the end. That suppresses what MATLAB calls the echo. It doesn't echo your calculation to the screen. So there it is. Now look over here in workspace. This is the the variables that are stored in memory right now. There had been 11 numbers. When you go from minus 5 to 5, it would seem like 10, but 0 is a number. So there's 11 entries in that, uh, that initial list. By going from minus 5 to 5 in steps of point one, now there's 101. Instead of there just being 100, there's also zero in there. So there's 101. Well, I can't plot x versus y right now because those lists aren't the same length. So let's go at y equals over here, and I'm going to hit the up arrow, and there it is. I'm just going to recall the last uh, command I used that uh, assigned y. So there it is. Oh, look at that. I didn't, I didn't suppress the echo, did I? So that's what it's going to look like if you don't. And now x and y have the same uh, lengths, and I can plot them. Let's do a little housekeeping here. If I want to clear the screen, just type in CLC, and that clears the screen. You can see my command history over here where I've been messing around. See clear right there? That doesn't clear the screen. That clears the workspace. That erases all your work that you have stored in the workspace. So don't hit clear unless you're really sure that's what you want to do. What I want to do is I want to hit plot, and I'll just pull that back up. 
That, that plot looks a lot better now. So I'm going to work with this plot here. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to move a few things over so you can see this on my screen. And let's say I want to have uh, turn the grid on. I can turn grid on with a command here. There's the grid. Maybe I want an X label and a Y label. Okay, there. Now see how things turn colors depending on what they're doing? So that single quote there and that single quote there are purple and everything in between them is purple. That means that what lies in between those quotes is now it's called a string variable. It's just a, a bunch of text. So there it shows up there. And if you can do X label, you can do Y label. There's that. In fact, you can put a title at the bottom, at the top of the plot if you want. There. That looks pretty good. Now, it looks like my roots are there and there, where it crosses the zero axis. Now, I did this uh, earlier, and my roots are 0 0.744 and minus 1.344. So those, those look about right. Yeah, those look about right. Maybe I want to zoom in. Go over here and just click that, and I can just do this. Does that look about right? Boy, it does. Let's zoom in some, a little closer. There. Let's see. 0 0.744. Yeah, it looks about right. I'll use the arrow here. And minus 1.344. So yeah, it looks about right. It looks like I've got the right answer here. So that's how you make a plot with a list of numbers. And the other way you can do this is make a plot with something called an anonymous function. Now why they call it that, I don't know, but that's what it's called. And I really am going to type in clear now because I really do want to clear out the workspace. I don't know, maybe I'll move this back over here. And I'll type in CLC again just so I know I'm starting from a nice clean starting point. If you want to define a function without having to define a list of numbers, you can do that. And here's the syntax. You write f equals, and then, whoops, f equals at, there. That at symbol right there, that ampersand, tells MATLAB that this is going to be a function definition. It doesn't have lists of numbers associated with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and just type my function in. Minus five. Now if you want, you can put spaces in here. MATLAB doesn't care. That's completely fine. The MATLAB isn't going to care about those. So I hit return, and since I didn't suppress my echo, it echoes it back to me and says, yeah, there it is. And if I look over in workspace, yep, there's a function. Now notice there's no dimension to this. Those aren't lists of numbers. That's just a function. Now I can't use the plot command, because plot only works on lists of numbers, but I can use something called easy plot. Easy plot plots functions. And I can the simplest way to do this is to just say easy plot f. There it is. Now, a couple things. It doesn't have any idea what range I want to use, so it just guessed. The other, see this here, this warning? Remember, I didn't put that dot in there like I did before, and it's just telling me that if you put the dot in there, that may speed up your calculation. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but these but warnings are in orange, not red. So a warning is just in orange. Orange text means your, your command did execute. It just it was trying to tell you something about it. Red means an error. It didn't execute. So let's go up to, let's put that dot in there now. See the dot showed up right there. And let's go back and hit easy plot. Now it plotted it without giving me the warning. Last thing, what if I want to use a specific range? Well, I can do that. Looks like this. Maybe I want to go from minus 2 to 2. And those square brackets uh, tell MATLAB that that's just a, a list of numbers, a horizontal list. And so uh, my list goes from minus 2 to 2. And there we go. I've got the right, uh, the, the uh, range I used before. Let me pull this out of here. I can type in grid again if I want to. Just pull this back over where you can see it. Now the other thing you can do in, once you've got this plot window up, you can edit the plot from within the window. I can make it any size I want. Let's say I want to click on, I want to change the uh, font. See, now I'm in the plot editor, property editor. I can do anything I want in here. 
So I had 10, maybe I'll go up to 16. Yeah, it's really big. And I've got axis. I could put axis labels in here. There isn't one right now. Well, there is. It's just an X. But let's say I want X axis and Y axis. Maybe I like that. I won't put a title. It's got a title on it now. Maybe I like that one. So I can close that. That looks pretty good. You now, maybe I want something other than blue there. Eh, how about, I like the bright blue better. And uh, maybe I want the line to be a little heavier. Okay. So you can click around there a little bit. And the best part about this now, I'm going to hit escape and get out of that. Um, I can save this in just about any format I want. Now the MATLAB native format is something called a figure file. That stores not just the picture, but it stores all the data that you took to make the picture. So it's kind of handy to save it in that format, but that I don't know of very many uh, programs that will import those. If you need bitmap, postscript, JPEG, whatever, just click on whatever you want and you can save it in whatever uh, format you want. The other thing you can do is you can just say copy figure. So there's Word. And there's my plot. Here, let's zoom out a little bit. So there you go. Hope that helps. We'll talk to you next time.